President, on the uh, 27th of June, 2010, President Obama made the following statement, and I quote, he said, I hope some of those folks who are hollering about deficits and debt will step up because I'm calling their bluff, end quote. Well, I'm stepping up. And at the same time, I also want to call the President's bluff because I think we're at a serious point in time in our history and we need to be realistic about what confronts us ahead of time. First of all, the biggest bluff this year in the Congress and in Washington was the 2012 budget presented by the President, which did not take any of the recommendations from his own deficit commission, which, by the way, I was one of the Republicans that supported his deficit commission, and instead locked in the 25.4 percent increase in spending over the last two years and made it permanent by calling it a freeze. It raises taxes in the out years and dedicates a higher regulatory environment in the United States of America. None of that does anything to reduce the debt or the deficit. In fact, the President's budget actually makes it worse. But it's fair to ask people to step up. The American people are asking us to step up. They want us to do what they've been doing the last three years. Sit around their kitchen table, reorganize their priorities, spend within their means, and reduce their debt and their deficit. The very least they should ask of their country is their country to do the same thing that they've had to do. And in large measure, we've been the contributor to the protracted nature of the current recession. Now, everybody knows that there are two ways you reduce, reduce the deficit in the short run and the debt in the long run. One way is to cut spending, but that's not the only way. Another way is to raise revenue and increase income. And that's not just by raising a tax, that's by improving business opportunity and expansion of opportunity in America. And there's a third way by changing the processes by which you regulate and make decisions, by looking at reforms that in the out years make a difference for all of us. On the spending side, the spending cuts are going to be difficult. They're going to be modest compared to what our deficit really is, but they're going to send a signal to the world that we're finally going to get serious about our spending level. And the majority of the rest of the world already has, whether it's Great Britain or many of the other countries in the European Union. So spending, cu spending cuts are important. But spending cuts in and of themselves will not solve the entire problem. In fact, H.R. 1 in the House, which made reductions of $61 billion, was a modest start at a long-term process. But it sent us in the right direction, and it called the bluff the President was talking about by making real significant proposals. Now, secondly, in terms of raising revenue, you raise revenue by expanding opportunity, not by raising the rate of tax, but as his deficit commission said, lowering the rate of tax, doing away with deductions that, that are specialized and targeted in nature, and give business the encouragement to expand. You know, a funny thing happened to me on January 3rd in Atlanta, Georgia this year, right after the 1st of January. I went to the OK Cafe in downtown Buckhead, Georgia, for a for a breakfast, that's the gathering place for most Atlanta business people on the north side of town. I was going to have a business meeting and walked in and Steve Hennessy, one of the largest automobile dealers in the United States, happened to come up to me and he rushed toward me, had his arms open. I thought I was going to get a good luck hug and I'd go to Washington and do a good job type speech. Instead, he put his finger right on my nose and he said, Johnny, I just had to hire two compliance officers to comply with Dodd-Frank and I lost a salesman. I'm spending more money complying and less money producing. And that's one of the things this administration has done in tremendous quantity to put us in a very difficult situation. Every agency is promulgating rules and regulations at a rapid rate. Regulations that to comply with cost new employees, more expense in operating a business, less capital investment in what that business does. It's very important that the President understand what happens, and that is regulation has consequences. And right now, the regulatory volume of the United States being proposed by this administration is unsustainable. It's costly, and it reduces the debt and the deficit of the United States of America. And quite frankly, it's a reach far beyond where government should really go. I'm the first person to support occupational safety, the first person to support financial security, the first person to, or person to support transparency. I will always fight to see that our government is transparent and our rules are fair and our occupational safety is good. But to overreach, to go beyond our reach, is just wrong. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Georgia is a large agricultural state. I was with some cotton farmers yesterday who were bemoaning the fact of the most recent proposal to regulate agricultural dust. 
They actually, EPA actually wants to regulate the dust created by a plow or a tractor or a truck on a dirt road on a farm to say the farmer must make sure that dust stays within the confines of his hedgerow or his fence lines. Meaning you're going to try and control nature? Well, how is he going to do it? By hiring water trucks to follow behind his tractor to tamp down the dust? That's a reach too far. To categorize milk as oil and to say that far farmers who run dairies have to hide storage tanks for milk that are the equivalent to storage tanks for petroleum. That's just crazy. It's a reach far too beyond. And what it does, it makes the ability to do business tougher, the ability to make a profit more impossible, the amount of revenue produced less because it's less profitable, and it protracts our debt and our deficit problem. So when the president talks about calling bluffs, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to sit down and talk about the hard things. In fact,